Hello and welcome everybody. Today's topic is the Merchant of Venice Act 5 Scene 1. You know that we have already completed part 1 of Act 5 Scene 1 where different references are there to different characters like Thisbe, then we have the Dido, then we have the characters of Greece and Troy. So all these characters, why they are referred over there, all that are discussed in my last video, uh, which is the part 1 of Act 5 Scene 1, Merchant of Venice. If you haven't followed that, the link is always there in the somewhere on top in the channel and you can click that and listen to that and then come back to this video. That will help you I guess and it's full and we'll continue with that Act 5 Scene 1 to try to finish it as fast as possible. So then we will also move on to the questions as we always do in our channel. So without any delay, let's begin with the video. And yes, don't forget to subscribe if you think that the video is helping you. And also press that bell icon so that immediately there, there you'll get a notification of any video that comes in my channel. Okay, let's begin. The Merchant of Venice, Act 5, Scene 1, Part 2. Let's begin with the lines. Enter Pisanio, Antonio, Cristiano and their followers. See, the first part is a bit difficult. Uh, we have to, not difficult, but you just have to memorize a few of the references. <coughs> From here, it's very easy, simple. Pisanio, we should hold day with the antipodes. Direct opposite if you would walk in the absence of the sun. Whatever is there in the bracket, you know that is the meaning of the words. Antipodes means just like the picture you see over here. If you are on the other side of the globe, no, you will get sun over there. And the other side, like now, when I'm recording this video, it is dark. At night, I'll record. So now this side of the earth is dark. But on the opposite side of the earth, opposite side, that, is, that means the, the direct opposite, the antipodes, then it will obviously be light. That means when one side is uh, has day, the other side of the earth or the globe will have darkness. If you would walk in the absence of the sun. So Bessanio says, if you think that uh, this is, um, this is um, something which... Uh, which is dark, there's something you, you, you think that this is uh, dark over here or this is light over here, just the opposite of what it is. That means this is the other side of the globe, then what will happen on the other side? Let me give light, but let me not be light. So Portia says, you see, I want to enlighten others, I want to help others, but I don't want to be a light woman. Light means lose without any morals. For a light wife, doth make a heavy husband. That means sometimes when you are very light and you do not have a proper character and you do not have morals, that is a very bad thing. Your husband is worried about it and she, he is bothered about that. And never be beside you so for me. See, you will get the full text explanation over here. You follow according to your textbook. Certain lines in your textbook is removed. But in certain uh, books, it is still there. So I will detail everything that you find over here. But yes, whatever portion is not there in your school textbook, you can delete that. But God saw it all. You are welcome home, my Lord. So okay, Miss Anu, I am thankful that you have finally come home. I thank you, madam. You are welcome to my friend. This is the man, this is Antonio, to whom I am so infinitely bound. That means I am indebted to this man, Antonio. This is Antonio with, with whom I have come. I have brought Antonio to your place. Portia, you should in all sense be much bound to him. For as I hear, he was much bound for you. So I know that he was bothered a lot because of you, only because you have loaned money from uh, in, in his regard and with his goodwill. He was bothered a lot for you. He was uh, in a lot of distress for you. So you must be indebted to him. No more than I am well acquitted of. So Antonio immediately says, No, no, I am very well paid back. And he has done everything for me. Portia, sir, you are very welcome to our house. We welcome you to, to our house. It must appear in other ways than words. So I don't want to just speak it. I also want to show, I want to welcome you in every way possible. So therefore, I scan this breathing curtsy. I will not just speak. I will not show my curtsy through words. I will also show it. You will be welcome very well in our house. Well, we move to the next page. Russian. Now, something is happening between Cristiano and Nerissa in between. By yonder moon, I swear you do me wrong. So, I am swearing by the name of the moon that uh, you, are do you are doing something, you are doing wrong. What is this? You should not do this with me. In faith, I give it to, I gave it to the judge's clerk, would he were jailed and that had it. For my part, since you do take it, love, so much at heart. 
So you see, uh, I should, uh, I am swearing in the name of Moon, I am saying that uh, I obviously did not give it to any woman. It was actually the judge's clerk, nobody else. It was just the, uh, the person who kept records for the judge. That is the person to whom I had given my ring. So uh, I, I would even uh, hope that that person gets sterilized. Okay, uh, that means that person is castrated, that my person is not a man only. Portia, a quarrel, oh already, what's the matter? So now Portia asks, what is the matter with you all? Rishya, about a hoop of gold, just like a picture hoop means that ring of gold, a paltry ring that she did give me was posy, that means there was a poem written on the uh, on the ring. Sometimes you have the poem inscribed, maybe love or any particular word. So that was there in the ring. Uh, for all the world, like Cutler's poetry, that means uh, I've seen that it was made by the, it was the poem was also written by the knife maker himself. It was not that good at all. And you see what was written, love me and leave me not. So it was written on the ring, but you see that that was not good poetry also. And that uh, because of giving away the ring to somebody, my wife is shouting at me. Nerissa, what talk you of the posy or the value? So why are you talking about the poetry on the uh, poetry written on the ring? You should be the, the more important thing is the value of the ring. I gave it to you with this promise that you will never lose. You swore to me when I did give it to you that you would wear it till your hour of death and that it should lie with you in your grave. You said that you will never part from the ring, uh, you, you, you will never uh, give it to anybody, you will keep it with you as long as you live. What happened to all those promises? Though not for me, yet for your vehement oaths, you should have been respected and have kept it. So you should have been more respectful, you should have kept the ring, you have promised something to me. If you don't do it for me, at least for your own word, you should have done it. Now you are saying that you gave it to a judge's clerk? No, God's my judge. The clerk will ne never wear here on its face that had it. So he, uh, she tried to show, Teresa was trying to point out, that obviously this ring was given to a maid, not a man. Grishyanu, he will and if he live to be a man. So Grishyanu says, see that person, that clerk as well as a Balthazar who is actually Portia and Nerissa, they are boys, they are actually girls, no, they do not have beard on their face. They disguised themselves like young men. So they did not have beard. So Grishyanu says, I know he is a man and soon he will, he is now a boy, he will soon grow up to be a man and grow beard. Nerissa. Ah, if a woman live to be a man, but Narissa is not going to accept it. She goes on saying, no, that is a lady that is not actually a man. Next page. Lushan, <clears throat> now by this hand, I gave it to a youth, a kind of boy, a little scrubbed boy, no higher than thyself, and judge's clerk, a prating boy, so that judge's clerk, that, that accountant of that judge, is a, is a very, you know, prating, that means a very talkative fellow, and uh, that fellow begged me of this ring, and uh, I could not, uh, could not for my heart deny it to him. So he was a stunted boy, you see, just stunted means, his height was not that much, just the height of yours. He's talking to Nerissa saying, the Nerissa is just the height of yours and he is a pretty sort, he will talk a lot and he requested, begged before the ring. So I could not deny. Portia, you were to blame. I must be blamed with you to part so slightly with your wife's first gift. It was the first gift that I gave you and you gave that away to somebody else. How come? A thing stuck on with oats upon your finger and so riveted with faith unto your flesh. It was riveted means it was fastened on your finger with a lot of faith and trust that I had on you. And you have given that ring to somebody else. I gave my love a ring and made him swear never to part with it. And here he stands. I dare be sworn for him. He would not leave it nor pluck it from his finger for the wealth that the world matters. So now Portia says that you see uh, this is very bad, uh, Krishyana, what you have done with your uh, wife. You should not have done that. When you have promised something to somebody, you should not have given up the ring, no? And uh, you see, I have also, now in faith, Krishyana, you know that I have also uh, given a ring to my husband. Uh, so, uh, I know that she, he will never give away that ring to anybody else. Even if the, 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 all the wealth of the world was offered to him, he would not give it away. Now in faith, Grishyano, you give your wife to unkind a cause of grief. Now, Grishyano, this is not at all right. What you have done is wrong. My husband will never do it. Why is Portia saying this? Very wittily she is saying this because obviously uh, Portia herself has taken that ring away from Bussanio, isn't it? So now 
she, at that time she was disguised as Vankazar, the lawyer. So uh, Bassanio did not know that this is Portia herself. And here Portia is saying this because he already knows that Bassanio does not have the ring that she gave him. Bassanio, why I were best to cut my left hand off and swear I lost the ring defended. So now Bassanio is thinking, you know, that oh my goodness, just now Portia will ask me where is my ring and uh, I, 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 he starts feeling very stressed out. He feels that if I could just chop off his hand and say, you see, I was protecting the finger and that man cut away my hand and went, that would have been better. I, I don't want to make my wife hanged. Prashya, my Lord Bassanio gave his ring away unto the judge that begged it and indeed deserved it too. So you see, your husband has also done the same thing. Okay, your husband has given the ring to the lawyer. And then his clerk, that means his uh, the, the, the one who does his paperwork, he took some pains in writing, he begged mine, so he requested my ring. So neither man nor master would take off the, but the two rings. So both man and master, that means the lawyer as well as his clerk, accepted nothing but the rings. So we had to give it to them. I hope the first three pages are clear to you, not first three pages, day two first three pages. If it is clear, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell button so that you receive notifications every time I upload videos. Okay, let's continue. Portia, what ring gave you my lord? Not that I hope which you received of me. Now Portia is showing that she's very angry. She says, don't tell me that you have given the ring that I gave you. Besides, if I could add a lie and do a fault, I would deny it. But you see, my finger hath not the ring upon it. So I don't have the ring, you see. You gave that ring to me, but that is the ring I had to give to that lawyer. <clears throat> Portia, even so void is your false heart of truth. By heaven, I will never come to your bed until I see the ring. So I will never be able to uh, have a happy life with you if I don't see the ring. You are so void, so empty. How can you just forget about the promises? You gave the ring to somebody else. This is completely a feigned, uh, you know, quarrel because Portia knows she herself took the ring from Bassanio. And the situation also, Bassanio did not want to give the ring. She actually took that ring from him. Narissa, nor I in yours, still I again see mine. So Narissa says, I will also not talk to you, be a wife of yours, until and unless I get my ring back. Bassanio, sweet Portia, if you did know to whom I gave the ring, if you did know for whom I gave the ring, and would conceive, that means if you if you knew in what condition I had to give the ring, why I gave the ring, and what that man had done, what that lawyer had done for us, that is why we could not deny him the ring. If you understood the reason why I gave the ring, how unwillingly I left the ring, that I was not at all interested in giving the ring. When not, that means nothing would be accepted but the ring. You would abate the strength of your pleasure. So I know that if you knew the real reason, if you knew the condition in which I gave the ring, you yourself would have said that yes, you should have given the ring then and there. Portia. If you had known the virtue of the ring or half her worthiness that gave the ring or your own honour to contain the ring, she keeps on saying that if you knew the importance of the ring, if you know that I, if you felt that I am important in your life, worthiness of mine in your life and if you knew that an amount of honour depended on it, your honour, your promise was intact to it, you would not then have parted with the ring, you would not have given the ring away then. What man is there so much unreasonable if you had pleased to have defended it with any terms of zeal? Wanted the modesty to work, the thing held as a, held as a ceremony. So she's, now Portia says, you could have told that person that this is a ceremonious ring, this is your engagement ring or given by you, given by your wife to you. Then obviously he would not have asked for it. It is not possible that even after listening, even after knowing that this is a ceremonious ring, ring given uh, for wedding, uh, that person would not have asked for the ring. Nerissa teaches me what to believe. I'll die for it, but some woman had the ring. So I am very sure, as Nerissa says, I will go with Nerissa. Nerissa is right that yes, this ring is actually given to a woman. Both of you have given the rings to some women. Besides, no, by my honor, madam, by my soul, no woman had it, but a civil doctor, which did refuse 3,000 ducats of me and beg the ring, the which I did deny him and suffered him to go displeased away. So this person, you know, I have not given this to any lady. And that person did not accept 3,000 ducats from me for whatever he has done. When I asked her, what asked that fellow what he wanted to take, he just said that he wanted that ring. 
and I said no at the first place. I said no, I cannot give you. And then he went away very unhappy. And I felt what even he uh, that did uphold the very life of my dear friend. He saved the life of Antonio. He saved the life of my dear friend. Without him, uh, Antonio would not have survived. So I felt so bad. What should I say, sweet lady? I was enforced to send it after him. I was beset with shame and curtsy. I was very sorry saying no to him. So I sent the ring uh, uh, to him so that he was not displeased. My owner would not let ingratitude so much be smeared. So I thought that I should not be that ungrateful. Uh, he did so much for my friend. I should not be ungrateful. And therefore I gave the ring. Pardon me, good lady, for by these uh, blessed candles of the night had you been there I think you would have begged the ring of me to give the worthy doctor so I am telling you I, I promise you that I, I, I can assure you that if you had been there you would have asked for the ring from me and given it to him yourself because that is the amount of good work the man did for us that is why I could not be ungrateful I had to give the ring away to him so this is all for today and only the last portion of the of the play remains. We will also, because that is just a small part, we will discuss the questions from Act 5 Scene 1 also over there, the important questions from there. So do follow the next video that is coming uh, soon in the next video. Uh, that's all for today. Hope you have liked the video and enjoyed it and also, you know, you love the explanation. It has helped you for your exam. That's all. Bye-bye everybody.